Oh man, it has been, it has been a little while. And also, pink dad hats, the cat's hats, the dad hats, those are back in stock. So right now, what I've been doing over the last week, week and a half, it's been a little while. We've been working on integrating all the wiring from the 1988 Honda Accord to work with the LS motor, meaning I wanna use my steering column, I wanna use a fuse box that I wanna use. I have a couple of different options. And overall, I've just been making everything work exactly how I want it. And this is a topic that sometimes is a little bit intimidating, and I wanna explain it to you and show you how to do it in a way that's not so intimidating and hopefully by the end of this video you learn something or you're entertained and also I worked on the hood a little bit so intro and now you're watching the if the United States was Roman Pierce Florida would be getting the ejecto cito cuz treatment channel of YouTube welcome to Bodie vision Thank you so much for joining me on yet another video. So that last clip that you just saw, that was me putting the structure back on the bottom of the hood just so that way it has a little more strength to it and that worked out really well. So now we are actually going to get into the wiring. So what we have right here, this is the Accord engine bay fuse box. This is just, you know, at this point we gotta start to look around start to map out all the options that we have for fuse boxes. There's the Accord engine bay fuse box. There's the GTO engine bay fuse box because the donor car for this entire project was a 2004 GTO. That's where I got the LS1 with the T56. So we have all the parts to work with. So we might as well work with everything that we can because I had to buy the entire car. And also we have the interior fuse panel for the Honda Accord. That's going to be staying because that's in charge of running all the things that I still want it to do. So the main thing that we had to decide was what do we want to do for the engine bay fuse box. And what I ended up deciding was I just want to use this one because it has a lot smaller footprint. It's going to be a lot easier to tuck and overall it's just going to be a lot cleaner. And keep in mind with this one there's a whole bunch of systems that went with the motor, the starter, the fuel pump, all these things that are no longer there because when the motor's gone that's not relevant anymore. So either way it's probably going to be the same amount of work. So you might as well pick something that you'd rather have as opposed to something big and bulky that's gonna mainly be dead in the end. So now we're starting to simplify things. The Accord engine bay fuse box is out of here. The interior fuse box, which is right here, this is going to stay. And then this fuse box for the GTO, we're going to completely strip it down because none of these original functions are going to be relevant anymore. We just want the body of the fuse box because it has all the slots for the fuses and all the slots for the relays that we're going to be running from scratch in the integration process. So speaking of integration, we have all this paperwork right here this is everything that we had printed out so the first thing that we need to think about is what do we want to happen when the key is in position number one number two and in position number three and that's all listed out right here so this schematic right here is based on the accord from factory so we're going to be able to use this as a map to see which wire is live in position number one what exactly is going on in position number two and what exactly is going on and isn't going on in position number three so if you can see right here is on the left side we have the key position meaning position number one one click forward two and three three clicks forward and then at the top we have the terminal slash wire colors now some of these wires were going out to the accord engine bay fuse box so we had to cut those pull those back and reroute them to the fuse box that we want to run which is the gto fuse box so now that we have power at the new fuse box we can start to map out everything that we're going to need so i just have this little list right here we need constant 12 volts for the holly ecu the switch 12 volts is going to be done at the ignition we need the gto fuel pump relay we also need the radiator fan relay and now these next five items came from the old accord fuse box and they just have to be moved into our newer simplified fuse box so that's interior lights, headlights, hazards, brake lights, and horn. So now that we know what we need from my list, now we have to trace them out where and how they were going to the old fuse box. So where the star is on every one of these schematics 
is where it was actually in the old fuse box. So there's for the headlights, this is for the lighting system inside the car and everything, this is hazards, and this is brake lights. So we had to trace this out, tracing all of the wire colors and everything for all of those functions, come out over to here, and they were all right here because this is where it plugged into the old fuse box, cut the wire, pull it in, and bring it into the new fuse box, which is actually sitting right over here amongst this big mess. This will still all be cleaned up, but either way, the new fuse box is tucked right underneath there. So that's exactly what we did. Figured out which fuse box we wanna run, figure out what's going to be there, figure out where those things that we want to be there were before, and bring them to where we want them to be now. So that way it's nice, clean, simplified, and everything's there. And all of this integration documentation is all listed out as well. Because this is just documentation on the Accord. Then once we changed it all, we had to make all new schematics from scratch. So if this car is ever sold, or if I have to do any kind of troubleshooting in the future, everything is listed out completely perfectly and let me let me show you some of those integration documents so after looking at all these documents all these printouts every single thing that we have what we are left is this right here accord ls1 integration and briefly going over how this works so this right here is the ignition so just for example when you have it in position number three that comes down around and goes over to the starter so when you have it in position three it hits the starter bring it back to position number two the starter goes off and there's all different kinds of things just like that and that wire if you trace it up here that actually goes to this fuse this is from the fuse box that we made earlier so all this is brand new and every single thing that we made is all listed right here so this is the end all be all integration schematics man and sorry about all the noise that's happening it's raining like crazy i'm over in christmas florida right now just east of orlando and there's actually a hurricane going on right now not too bad so if we go over to the car i just kind of want to show you some of the functions show you how some of the thing works and show you that everything is working like it should be and again i apologize about the rain but the fact of me showing you that everything works shows that everything was done correctly but just coming over here to my key now keep in mind this is my original accord key original column everything is original so that position number one two and three that's pretty self-explanatory so in position number one my ECU is not on, nothing is on. The only thing that's gonna be on, which is right here, is going to be the radio. So that's not plugged in, so I can't show you that. Now if I bring it to position number two, the ECU comes on, then we got my dash that's going to light up. It's booting up right now. So we have this right here showing you everything. Then my fuel pump is on in the back. The fan is on in the front because I just had the car idling. So the actual, the coolant temp is 195. So the fans are on. So now when we go into position number three. All right, so now we are live, baby. So everything's there. As you can see, everything looks good. It's working like it should. Temp, mile power, air fuel ratio, oil pressure, battery voltage, RPM, temp, everything. And now I know you guys have heard the car run before, but now it's going through all the controls. Everything that should be fused is fused. All the relays are working. Everything's working 100% like it should work. And this thing, man, I cannot get enough of it. Super crazy. And then another thing, let me just show you right here. The hazards are actually going through the new fuse box. So it is working just like it worked before. So it's not extremely interesting for anybody else, but it is completely working through an entirely new system. And that goes for the headlights, that goes for everything. So the fact that that's working, the fact that the car is on is really phenomenal. Man, dude, everything's working like it should. Integration is all there. The car is running and we're in the middle of a hurricane. I'm actually filming this. I'm uploading this Sunday, filming it Sunday morning. So it's about well, 11 o'clock right now. It's not too bad. But by the time this is uploaded, maybe it'll get a little bit worse. You just listen to the car, man. Yeah, 
and we actually had to jump it because we were messing around with it so long having the fuel pump on without it starting and the fans on that does drain the battery that's why we got pops this car right here because we had to jump it if it wasn't raining i'd love to bring the car out but i think that's not going to be on this one that's going to be on next one i want to bring the car out talk about it drive it around and then we got to get into body work paint work and all of that is on the way i could not be more excited for that so I hope I didn't make this video too boring. I know not, I know not a lot of work happened, but this has really been the last two, three weeks. We've just been working on the wiring like crazy. I hope I brought it to you in a way that was easy to understand, nice and digestible, and again, easy to understand, somewhat entertaining. The next video, when we get into a little bit more stuff, hopefully that is a little better. And I don't think this one, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video, comment, subscribe, check out the merch, do all the stuff. You know what it is, YouTube. I will see you on the next one. Hopefully I don't get blown away by the storm. I'm out.